Hi guys, how are you doing today? Today, for Physics 101 class, we're going to look into the physics in the movie The Fugitive, specifically the dam jump scene, when Harrison Ford jumps off the dam. We're going to see how probable the physics in that movie actually are. I'm here today with Brandon Hamrick and Zach Deem, and uh, we're going to look at Our first calculation, we decided to find velocity. We just used acceleration times time, and the acceleration was 9.8 meters per second squared of gravity, and uh, the time it took him to fall in the movie was 5.88 seconds. We uh, took an average of three tries counting that, and it was all within a tenth of a second. So that came out to be 57.62 meters per second, and we just converted that to uh, miles per hour here, and we got 129.6. We took the, um, this number, and we decided to compare it to other numbers to see how realistic that was. Could somebody really fall that fast? And from what we found, there were um, coincidences where people fell at speeds greater than 120 miles per hour, but it was all during skydiving and falling at really great distances. Um, so we decided to rerun this calculation. And uh, the great thing about physics is it gives us multiple formulas to find the same thing because we actually know enough variables in this equation to calculate the uh, So what we did was we took 230 way. feet and converted it to meters. This was the height of the dam. Uh, we Googled the dam. It was the Chioa Dam in uh, North Carolina that was made in the movie. Uh, and we converted it to meters. So we took this formula, the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared, plus 2 times the acceleration times the height from which he fell. When we plug our numbers in, his initial velocity at the top of the dam, of course, is 0, plus twice the um, gravity acceleration constant and the height, we get this as our answer, 37.07 meters per second. When we convert this number to miles per hour, it comes out to be 82.9, which seems like a much more realistic number for somebody to We Googled that Harrison height. Ford's weight to get 205 pounds, and we just converted that to kilograms right here. And then uh, we use that to find the potential energy of him falling off the dam. It's just mass times gravity times his height. And it came out to uh, just over 63,000 joules. And then uh, we want to compare that to his kinetic energy at the end, which is just one half times his mass times velocity squared. And we use the velocity calculated over here, meters per second, from the last time. And then uh, we found that that came out to be about the same. Let's make sure uh, energy was finally conserved. the important part, we have to calculate the force to do this. We're going to use kinetic energy divided by the impact. So we already calculated the kinetic energy in the last equation. But um, for the impact, it was kind of difficult to say. In class, she said that for a hard surface, uh, usually 0 0.01 is a reasonable impact to use, but where he's falling into the frothy water, it's kind of hard to say what his impact's going to be. So we estimate that that's going to soften his landing by about 20 times um, what it would normally be. So we use 0.2 for our impact, and we got a force of 319,360.9 newtons. After that, uh, we decided to convert that to pounds per square inch because whenever we uh, were researching how much force is required to break a bone. It was always in pounds per square inch. So to do this, uh, we use the equation of um, 0.2248 pounds per newton, and then estimated that he had about um, 50 square inches of surface area hitting the water, because we estimated about 25 square inches of surface area per foot, and for each foot hitting the water, um, we got 1,435.85 pounds per square inch. Sorry if my Steelers apparel offends anybody, but um, to sum things up, when we pulled together all the calculations, we got that if Harrison Ford lands square on his feet, it exerts 1,435 pounds per square inch on his feet. Um, there's lots of variables that go into this. Of course, how does the water affect it? Was that estimate accurate with the impact? Does he land square on his feet? Is it, are his feet bent? Does he hit another body part? And that could draw some of the impact, um, but the way we ran it, we calculated 1,435 pounds per square inch. We compared that to other numbers that we researched to find out how much force it re was required to break a bone or uh, various other injuries, and we found that um, there was forces as low as about 700 pounds per square inch required to break bones, um, it's like lumbar vertebrae and things of that nature. Um, so it's entirely feasible that Harrison Ford could sustain an injury from this fall, but um, we're calculating the probability that the physics in the movie were accurate. And in the movie, he does land in the water, he does kind of land on incline, um, and also if he lands on his feet and he does break a toe or something of that nature, it's not really going to affect the way he swims to get away or 
anything like that. So when we look at all these factors, then we have to conclude that yes, um, the physics in this movie are entirely within the realm of reasonable, accurate physics.